I try to Call be optimistic. Me. Hold I me try closer. to be optimistic, and I am because of our next guest. She is surely one you will remember, and not just because of her name. Journalist, podcaster Sarah Marshall is getting to the bottom of some of the popular narratives and myths behind the events, people, and phenomena of the past that have been miscast hmm. for far too long, including, but not limited to, huh. the capitalism oh of Beanie my Babies. Gosh. I still see them at Stu Leonard's, by the yeah, way. Uh, and I wonder, I wonder what's happening there. Uh, also, how we have Valentine's Day all along. The this is fascinating. It is because I don't like Valentine's Day. Uh -huh. Now she's taking her podcast on the road for live and epic conversations that are giving a whole new perspective on some of the notorious misunderstandings in pop culture history. Right. Okay. So joining us this morning to set the record straight is host of the award-winning podcast, You're Wrong About. Please welcome <laughs> Sarah Marshall. Thank you. Good morning. Welcome. Thank you for being here. Thank you. This is fascinating. When we talked about this in the production meeting, I thought finally someone is taking a very smart approach to people <laughs> that we've put up on a pedestal yeah. or people that at the time were like these beacons. It's all anyone could talk about. Right. And then they disappear Oof. into, thin into air. the ether. I want to know if I can peel back that, that skull. All right, Hannibal Lecter. How did you, <laughs> I promise I won't need anybody. How did you decide that this was the idea that you would latch on to? And did you think it would have any sort of success? I think like most ideas, it, was, it wasn't it was one person's brain. I think all the best ones are collaborative. So mm. my uh, founder of the show and former co-host, Michael Hobbs, he was a journalist at the Huffington Post at the time. He had read an article I published in 2014 about Tanya Harding and how oh. we had misunderstood that story when it happened. I'm from Portland, Oregon, so that was close yes. to my heart. Okay. And he wanted to do deeper dives on misremembered history. and. I loved that idea, and I hadn't thought of doing it in a podcast. I've been trying to do it in written pieces, but this was clearly the right format, and I wouldn't have thought of it on my own. Right. Uh, I love it. Teamwork makes a dream work. And uh, what a niche you, because I, I don't know anything like this that's happening, at least to my knowledge. So obviously there are countless subjects mm -hmm. that you can dive Gosh, deep right? into. How do you choose the people that you then go and explore the life timeline of yeah. and, and like, how do you how do you decide okay I'm gonna do like we're gonna talk about Debbie Thomas yeah. how do you mm -hmm. arrive there yeah I mean the, the yeah there are so many potential topics because I feel like really history is about trying to get a condensed version of the past and it's mm -hmm. always more complicated and there's always more that we can understand about humans based mm -hmm. on and kind of connections we can feel to people uh, when we really learn about them and think about them but for me it's really about uh, do I feel like I have something to contribute here? Do I feel like I can understand this person and empathize with this person? Because uh, I, I love to do the story of a person rather than the story of an idea or a thing. And then communicate that to the audience. So these live shows we've been doing, I've been talking about uh, the Vicki Morgan scandal, which mm. is a, at this point, kind of forgotten scandal from the 80s and kind of tangential to the Reagan administration, mm. but absolutely fascinating. And I, when I can't stop thinking about something, that's when it's the right topic. Okay. That's when you know. Enough said. Right. If when you wake up and you're still thinking still about it, mind. Mm -hmm. do the thing. As a journalist, I find it fascinating because there's so much content mm -hmm. in the world. And you are taking a different approach and a different look to people, as you mentioned, not ideas, people. We know how their stories ended. Mm -hmm. And yet, you were going back and saying, they weren't forgotten, we misremembered them, which was a very interesting word that you different. used. Mm. What do you mean by that? And, and I, I, I love the tool that you go back, I know what happened to Debbie Thomas, mm -hmm. but you're forcing me to think about it in a much bigger cultural right. way, which I think is fascinating. Right, yeah, and I think memory, memory is so tough for mm. us as humans, because we yep. want to believe that we can remember basically everything that's happened to us, and if we're honest, maybe we know that as we get older, especially, we're aware that you know there's so much that I absolutely don't remember that I have done or said or been, so been yeah. said to me. We come out of interactions with different ideas in our head of how it went. So I think part of it is about just admitting that memory is not everything. We can't count on our kind of understanding of something that happened in the background for us as we were living our lives, raising our kids, going to school, doing what we do and that kind of going back in and looking at the details is so important. I mean, Debbie Thomas is a great example because you can- Can we get, can we get into that? Because we yeah, have a couple yeah. of examples of, yes. of folks whose lives you went back- I love that. To re-remember, so start with Debbie, who Let's, won 
She medaled at the, yeah. was that the 84 Olympics? 88, 88. 88. Yeah. To Katarina Witt, the German. Oh my gosh, I remember looking at oh the podium people. saying, oh. <laughs> yeah, and that was that was such a great, I mean, I was about to be born as that Olympics <laughs> happened, so I like to think that that was, that was my first Olympics, in a sense. <laughs> and um, that was, you know, that's a story that fits with your question so well, because you can remember everything that happened and be right about it. You can remember she was a skater in the 80s, she was the first black American to win a medal of any mm -hmm. kind at any Winter Olympics in 1988. Wow. Um, she won a bronze medal. She was in the Battle of the Carmens. And yet the, the deeper story that we got into with my guest Leslie Streeter is, you know, what was the sport like for her? Why aren't there black skaters? Why weren't there any then competitive at the world level in, among American skaters aside from Debbie? Why now, when I went to the nationals this year, were there now two black women right. in, uh -huh. in senior female skating competition? Why is the sport the way that it is? And that's really, it's not that we even necessarily were wrong about it, but that we didn't know to think about it. Right. Different time back then in 1988. Really? And I want to, we have to just, not switching gears, but we're mm -hmm. going to another one of your subjects because yeah. the Anne Hathaway, Anne Hathaway gate is a very <laughs> real thing. And I didn't realize that people started to dislike her. Was I was living in, my, in La La Land. I always liked her. As you say, you know, it, it's like as if everybody woke up collectively and was like, eh, eh. we don't like her. What is, what's the story behind that? Right, that one's that's also so fascinating. That was, uh, I had a wonderful guest, Eve Lindley, for that one, who talked about, you know, the kind of narrative of her career. She starts off as a theater kid. She's very prepped um, for all of her roles. She loves to work hard. Um, and then she just gradually kind of develops this reputation as a tryhard. Um, which is something that we sometimes don't like. And yeah. the, the penny kind of drops when she wins her Oscar um, and kind of looks at the award and says, it came true, which I find so fascinating as a moment to dissect because how many little girls have pretended that a shampoo bottle is an Oscar? Is Oscar? Mm -hmm. Right, me, mm -hmm. I did. <laughs> Every day, every time I wash my hair. Right. So with, in, in the case of a Demi Thomas, in the mm. case of an Anne Hathaway, and you, 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 you asked the right question, mm. you know, where did we go wrong or what, maybe we got it wrong. How do we move on from there? Mm. Do we ever find a conclusion? Can they be restored? Yeah. Mm. Or is it just up to the individual? Because I know, yeah. I, I will go on record that's saying, as a working journalist, we have been part of the demise of many people. And I know that as, as media, we try to change it, we do. I do, mm -hmm. you know, um, but for people who aren't in the business, do we find closure? Yeah, I mean, that's fascinating to me too, right? Because in order to talk about media, I have to be media. Right, right. and it's, it's tough. Right, <laughs> right, and everybody is working on a schedule, many of them extremely tight, and I think, right, it's a question for journalists and also for the public, and I think, to me, the big thing is, Clearly the same patterns recur in terms of how we look at stories and learn about people. And I think really what we have to ask ourselves looking at a story that's breaking in the news that's just coming out is if we're feeling the sense of joy at someone's suffering, right. um, what's that about? What, we, what does it say about us? I was just going to say, I know where this is going. I try to check myself like right. that on a daily right. basis whenever I feel these feelings. Thank you for making us take this look. Now, yeah. we just wanted to mention, mm. you mentioned you're you're doing these live shows mm -hmm. you're on the road it's sold out so we can't, we can't see but talk to us a little bit about that experience what it's been like kind of touring it's been so wonderful i had no idea that it would be this fun um or that i would feel this degree of comfort doing it i've been uh touring with so my show's producer carolyn kendrick is playing her music she's an incredible musician um so she is playing really kind of a selection of beautiful love songs, which is great because then the love stories we have to tell mm -hmm. are uh, quite depressing. And oh my God. you can see there that Sonia Thomas, because my co-host wow. in these uh, shows is the wonderful comedian and author, Jamie Loftus, who is uh, an expert on hot dogs. She <laughs> literally wrote the book on hot dogs. It's <laughs> called Raw Dog. It's out next month. And so we're, we're talking about hot dogs. We're talking about Reagan were, uh, you know, all, all things key to American Full culture, spectrum. really. Right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And, and we try to, you know, make it fun and give people the feeling when they leave, not that they've been scolded, but that they, you know, that we all are 
feeling closer to each other and yeah. kind of sharing our humanity. That's what it's all about. It really is. You Sarah also Marshall, won an award. You. Oh, <laughs> there are a lot of po there are a lot of podcasts you can choose. Apparently, you've been choosing hers. Congratulations. Thanks so much. The 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 best podcast in the universe. I'm blanking <laughs> on what the exact title was, but the I. The iHeart Heart yeah, Radio best podcast. Bed, best podcast of the year. Yeah. Congratulations. I Heart Radio. Best universe. Best in the universe. Uh, you know what the, we're gonna she was just manifesting exactly. for you, putting it out there. The best the podcast universe. in the Thank universe. Thank you so much for this. And be sure to follow the You're Wrong About podcast mm -hmm. on Instagram at You're Wrong About Pod. And mm -hmm. be sure to listen to new and past episodes on your favorite podcast streaming platform right now.